Which is easier for you? To give or to receive? Which makes you feel better inside? To give to someone or to receive from someone? Which is better? I think we typically would say that to give is better than to receive. I mean, Apostle Paul even uses that very, those very words in one of his letters. And it is true that it's important to give and, and giving is great, but maybe there's a way in which giving isn't always better than receiving. Craig Barnes, uh, in his book Sacred Thirst, says, I'm always amazed at how stressed the people in my congregation get during the Christmas season. He said, everybody's in overdrive. I'm sure we know nothing about that, but he's talking about his congregation. <laughs> he said, the one group of people in my congregation that never seem to be stressed over the holidays is the children. His children never seem to feel anxious about all the cards they have to send out, all the parties they have to attend, all the presents they have to give. He said, I have not once in all my years of ministry ever had a child come to me during the holiday season and say, Pastor, would you pray for me and my stressed out little life? He said, it just doesn't happen. And he said, I think it's because children have the only worry that children have is being able to wait for Christmas to come. And so I think children have learned something that you and I maybe miss is that there is something, there can be something better about receiving than giving. But he said, when I read the gospel stories, there's only one person who is giving, and that's God. Everyone else in the story are people who receive. They respond to God in a variety of ways. Mary treasures these things in her heart. The shepherds go off rejoicing and praising God. The wise men come and worship. But it's all because God gives, not because they do. And you know, maybe there's something about that idea that we miss. Because there's something about the, the idea of giving that it doesn't have to be this way, but sometimes our giving to other people is a way of sort of controlling the relationship. There's a way in which giving is, is a way for us to say, okay, we, we've done a little bit more. We've sort of set the scales, tipped the scales just a little bit in our favor. And you know that's true because what happens when people just out of the blue give us something? We will tend to think, why are you giving this to me? Or then we have to think of something we have to give back. There's something in us that finds it difficult to just be people who take joy and find contentment in receiving. And there is a way in which I think children get that better than we do. Last week, the grandchildren were over, and we were watching How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, not the modern movie versions, the real version. <laughs> the animated version, probably in the 1960s, narrated by Boris Korloff. You know, the older I get, the more I realize it's the old movies that are better than the new ones, but maybe that's because I'm old. But that's a whole other thing. So we're watching the story, and I'm intrigued by Jerry, our four-year-old's interest and response to the story. And he gave me permission to tell this. And as we're watching the story, he's asking me all kinds of questions. Why is the Grinch taking their decorations? Why is the Grinch taking their presents? Why is the Grinch taking their feast? Why is the Grinch taking their roast beast? Why is the Grinch taking everything? Well, I didn't want to say too much because I didn't want to give away the story to him. I just said, well, you know, you wait and see. 
And you get to the point in the story where the Grinch has piled up his sleigh with everything from Whoville, and he runs it up to top of Mount Crumpet, and he's standing at the top of Mount Crumpet with his hand to his ear, and as dawn breaks, he's waiting for the Who's to wake up and to be devastated that everything is gone. And he's waiting for all to hear the sobs and the wails and the cries. And instead, he hears singing. The people in Whoville are singing, joyful, gracious singing. And Jerry looks at me and says, why are they singing? And I said, well, they've realized that Christmas isn't just about decorations and food and presents. And then I spiritualized it a little bit and said, <laughs> because they understand that Christmas is about Jesus. And, and when you have Jesus, you can be joyful even if you don't have all these other things. Isn't that great? And he looked at the TV for a few seconds, then he turned to me and said, yeah, but they're getting their presents back, right? <laughs> Now, let's not pretend that we aren't thinking the same thing when we watch that story. Why do we love that story? Because they get the presents back, right? I mean, that's, that's the end of the story that we love. And there's something in that mindset that I think is profound. Because it made me remember those words of Jesus in Matthew 18. Unless you change and become like a little child... You can never enter the kingdom of heaven. And I suspect there's a lot that Jesus is talking about when he says to change and become like a little child. But I'm certain one of those things is having a heart that is open and willing to just receive. And more than anything, to receive the gift that God gives us that we celebrate on this day the expression, the greatest expression of his loving, merciful, gracious heart. And sometimes we can get so wrapped up in the stuff we need to do and the things we need to accomplish, we forget that it boils down to receiving. There's something in the back of our minds that believes if we just that we can, we can earn it if we just work hard enough. We couldn't earn it if we, on our very best days. There's something in us that says, well, you know, I deserve it. We don't deserve anything. It's a gift. And it doesn't mean that we don't give. Please don't hear me say that. I'm not saying that. I don't want you to be people who stop giving. It's just that Christmas reminds us that we don't give to receive, we receive to give. The receiving is what motivates our giving. The receiving is the beginning of our giving. It's not a coincidence that John begins his gospel by telling us, speaking of Jesus, to all who received him. To all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Isn't it fascinating that John connects receiving and being children? There is something about that mindset that you and I may sometimes struggle to grasp, but we need to. Because this is a day that is in its essence as wonderful as the giving is, but the essence of this day is opening our hearts, our minds, our wills, our lives, everything about us to receive. To receive this wondrous, glorious gift that God has given us in His Son, Jesus Christ. And to remember that God doesn't give because He's coerced or because He's manipulated or forced but simply because God wants relationship with his creatures, and he loves us. And that is why we celebrate today. That's why we come today and we sing and we celebrate and we give thanks and we rejoice. 
And not just this day, but every day. That God has come to you and to you and to you and to me. Is we just receive. Amen.